Before COVID, uh, we taught all of our spatial sound uh, electives and also our studios uh, in the facility in uh, Building 100. Very much hands-on, face-to-face, using workshops, using a whole range of things around the design field that need that one-on-one, -on -one, face to face tutorials. As we move through, and particularly when we went to concurrent teaching in the second semester, we started to say, let's not think of ourselves as an online program, let's think of ourselves as a global program. Some of the ways that we had to redesign the course we um, obviously had a lot of experience and techniques in teaching face-to-face. -face. So what we looked at was ways that we knew students could work by themselves, sometimes with a phone, sometimes with a recorder, but also moving as, as many of our materials as we could onto a SharePoint. So students could still listen to recordings, they still had access to some of the key papers, and we also had the technical videos as well. Although the experience wasn't being here with us, we tried to give them as many different types of media that they could use at home. Initially, MDIT, of course, had the Sile Sound Studio, a studio where we can set up the whole room to run concurrent courses so students who are online feel that they're part of that classroom experience. It's a it's much more organic um, type of experience. In terms of cameras, we're just using webcams. Um, webcams, USB extenders. We're using some shotgun microphones that are placed above our loudspeakers. For our video switching system, we're using OBS. It does require some kind of user setup and um, everyone that was using the studio, we spent a good amount of time just making sure that they were comfortable with how that system operates. But once that's all set up, you just have a little, uh, it's called an Elgato Stream Deck that allows you to control different scenes in OBS, taking away as much as we can from the lecturer having to think about, you know, am I sharing my screen, am I sharing my audio, all that kind of fiddly stuff, trying to reduce as much of that as possible. One of the key things to concurrent teaching is good sound. If you're straining to hear what someone is saying or if they can't hear you, so good mic, good speakers, it's much easier on you. It's not as tiring. Um, and I, I'll be honest that concurrent teaching, any teaching online is doubly tiring to doing things face to face just because you're so focused. So what our system allows in the studio is that the lecturer can just walk around have a conversation with students sitting there, not feel like they're tethered to anything, you know, they're not wearing a wireless microphone, there's no batteries that they need to change, there's no loan desk that they need to make sure they're returning gear to and from. It's just there, it's ready to go. It's, there, there is no technological solution you can drop on any class and it's going to work. Every class is different, every teacher is different, every topic is different. You shouldn't feel like you're in an online, online or a room, it's really you're engaged with the teaching materials and the discussion and that's, that was the most important thing. I think if you're going to engage in concurrent teaching, you have to approach it with fresh eyes. You can't assume that the techniques that you've used successfully in the past will work in a concurrent environment. Uh, one technique that we did find was when breaking up the class into study groups is that you have exercises for students who are online while you're talking to the students in the class and then vice versa when you're talking to the people online there's something for the people to do in the class. So you don't want to rob the people who are in the room of being able to go and do things physically and you don't want to disadvantage the people who are sitting in their parents kitchen who haven't got access to fantastic workshops and things like that. The greatest technology in the world is not going to solve that. Um, the only way that's going to solve that is the teaching and communication techniques that are developed in the class. If I had to give some advice to, um, to other groups, to other programs looking to set up, I would say try and do development work before semester. Get used just, just to the physicality of it, to get used to the technical layers, and then don't be afraid to adapt. Now, there really isn't one solution for this. You really have to adapt it to the rooms you have, teaching style and the content. I think maybe is one bit of advice to take from a technical standpoint um, is just thinking about three key things that um, you know technically need to be worked out, and that's you know your camera, what do the online students need to see, uh, your microphone, so what do you need to pick up, and then your speakers as well. So how are you actually listening to those online students as well? In order to address concurrent teaching 
it's uh, a developing field. The technology is critical to it. The teaching practice is critical to it. The idea of a, of a global classroom, uh, that's its potential. We like to think that we can take that model into collaborations now with other universities. And we're already talking about running studios in three different time zones around the world and using concurrent models and the communication technology to augment that type of collaboration. We formed a, a, an academic-led group to work with uh, the school uh, technical services uh, and also representatives from DSC and we've also invited people from AV services as well. And that was really to take the experience we've had over the last two years and now to turn that into the equipment layer we need in 2022. We've acknowledged that each program, even individual academics and um, the rooms that they work in and the content they teach are all different. And so it wasn't going to be just a top-down, one-size-fits-all approach because we knew that wasn't going to work, but we were up to the best result for that um, academic moment of teaching.